Welcome back. It's still Plots Politics. Uh, we are examining the statement credited to the governor of Ondo State, uh, Arakuni uh, Rotimi Akiridolu, where he said that he sees nothing wrong in this protester's account being frozen, that they should just go to court and prove their issues and get their accounts unfrozen. And we've been speaking with uh, the spokesperson of Afeni Ferry, Yinka Odumaki, and the ABC chieftain in Ondo State, uh, Mr. Otito Atikashi. Yeah, we had a slight change in the network and we are back. Let me quickly have Mr. Yinko Dumaki uh, finish his thoughts before we lost yeah, that so, network. So, in a nutshell, how will you determine, how will you determine that the people who are facing accounts, they actually participated in the NSAS without the judicial process saying so, without investigation, without being brought, uh, charges being brought against them, you confirm that they participated in the protest. You can you can explain it to them. You can tell that you okay, you want to go and execute them. But you first you must first damage their guilt. But in this case, you have not damaged their as you have not damaged their guilt and you are executing judgment already against them. And that's why we we in that say that Arak Narakeru is a senior lawyer with his serious background. President of the Yan Bar Association is not a, it's not a joke. The first of all, the legality, we should be careful to know that we are not doing sackers with the leadership. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Tito, uh, let me quickly, let me quickly, before you quickly, before you quickly react to that, because I'm trying to manage time, uh, please put your thoughts in context. Then secondly, he has raised something very critical about the position of uh, Mr. Keridolu, uh, which you also mentioned that he spoke as a lawyer, and not as a politician, because the current MBA has also frowned at the decision of CBN. So put these two in context. You see, what, I, what I'm saying is this. If you know Governor Akerolu, SCN, you know it's not a man that plays to the gallery. He will say it the way he sees it. So it he, he doesn't, he doesn't whip up unnecessary sentiment in order to gain popularity from the public. The problem we have in this country is that there's only a political undertow in whatever action we take in the interest of the public. We just want to tell the public what the public wants to hear. We don't put into consideration the reality of the moment. What we are saying is that if, if you think government has wronged you, the, the most appropriate legitimate means to seek redress or to, to, to attend to that is for you to go to court and say what the government has done is wrong based on social, social reason. Mr. Tito, and the government Mr. Tikashi, to come out Mr. Tikashi, with the reason why they have posed your account. Mr. Tikashi, before you go, uh, uh, because my time is almost spent, let me ask you this last question and put all your thoughts in this response. Now, when you say they are playing to the gallery, they want to say the truth, maybe I should remind you that this same Afeni Ferry threw all their weight behind Governor Koredolu when it was time for Amotekun. So what do you mean? Are you saying that now they've gone on their different ways because they disagree with him on a particular issue? Because I'm not aware that this Afeni Ferry group is against the governor. Or what do let, you mean by political interpretation now? Let me tell you if it, let me tell you if you don't know. Let, let me, me tell know. you if you don't know. You see, as an they supported Akechi on issue of Hamateku just because they had no option. If they had no option, if they had if they had option, they would have done otherwise. If you look at Afeni Ferry fundamentally, they are PDP apologists. And I, I don't have any I don't have any that, apology. That, Okay, so that's, don't worry. That's, 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 that's very rude. That's, that's very rude of you. And I'm very, very no, 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 I don't listen to I'm me. I'm not here, but no, I don't, okay. don't say that. How can you say that? Okay, Mr. Dumaki, I'm going to allow you to uh, respond. You have been rude about this matter. Okay, Mr. Dumaki, I'm going to allow you to respond. No, no. All of us in your own land are not necessary. And when you find out that what is not like a political what Dumaki has done on this matter is beneath him. You have said the truth. He has, a, he, has, he has a standing. 
is it all the, the, polit the political area boys who are looking for candidacy? Is, is that is, that, is, is beneath him? I can't even to, to do like this, this, this kind of thing. You must say the truth. Huh? Okay, you know what I'm going it's to really do, really Mr. Odumaki and uh, Mr. Tikashi? I, I will allow it's both of you to, 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 to drop your final comment on this. So, Mr. Tikashi, please, can you just uh, finish your thoughts, Mr. Yiko Odumaki? We'll, okay. we'll wrap it up. Okay. Yes, uh, 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 thank, thank you, thank you. What I want to say is this. In this country, we know ourselves. We know the antecedents of every group. We know the political interests of every group. And when issues of this nation come up, we will tell the, the world how it is and the thinking of an every person. Let me tell you today, as you speak, those who sponsored NSAC fundamentally, they believe that they should use that NSAC protest to change government once they didn't have any legitimate, legitimate means. What are your proof? So. What are and your that proof? is why they are so pained. That is why they are, they are, they are whipping up sentiment of various uh, 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 degrees. Otherwise, you are saying NSAC. Government has ended SAC. They have agreed to your five to five demands. And uh, still, you are still talking about NSAC. And let me also tell you, sir, there is need for mm. us to look to, to dig uh, deep into this matter. I have never seen a kind of protest that led to this kind of wanting destruction of properties and economic well-being of our people. I was an activist, and I always support legitimate protest. But where a protest is being adjudged, where a protest lacks focus, where a protest is being manipulated by political maruda, we should think twice. Okay. Uh, 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 Atikashi, you might be lucky to still respond. My producer told me that this conversation might still continue. But let me speak to Mr. Yinko Dumake. You have the floor yes. to correct whatever you want to correct. Yes, um, I, I, I want to say that. Let me, let, let me tell my brother that we know where we are coming from. Governor Kerulu has also set that path. That your governor now should not make you forget where you are coming from. Your tenor will be over. You are come back to the society. And don't misuse your capital for who are doing wrong things. We are responding because it's the same. These are who have made that kind of statement. We will just ignore them. But because we put some value on him, that there's some standard. Ah, we, are, we know who things they have done. We stood well on Amatekun. We commended him openly. For standing right. But on this one, we don't think what has done is right. And my brother and I want to, talk to turn it to political blackmail. That's what I object to. But I'm saying that our governors who come from starting moral values that are different from those who are misunderstanding the country and don't say anything wrong, they should do what is right. That's what I think to them. We are not, I, I, I don't fight Governor Kerry Lewis, my friend. But we mo like my brother's name said, we, stop, we must speak the truth to ourselves. When something is wrong, we say it is wrong. When it's right, it's right. I, I'm happy that the Modelo said that when Governor Kerry did things that, that were right, even when, the, even when the election was on, we didn't mind. We commanded him. We won't say that he will take a political, political advantage from it. But when something is wrong, now that we are still talking, so for us to come on, on here and be blackmailing us, it's what I object to. Okay. Our, um, we, our governor, I mean, What's the business of the, uh, the CPN governor? Is the business of the CPN governor the cause to damage who is an NTAS protester supporter and taking action against them without a court order? It's not a, it's not a jungle. We are not a jungle. We are supposed to play a democracy. Although we are not the rule of uh, uh, the, the democracy being run by a general. Like the point is what we say. The entire general. Okay. But we are not going to have this rule. And we still do things democratically. Okay. Um, Even who have committed offense. You can go and call, you cannot use law against them. But the, the law must find them to be guilty of an offense. You cannot punish, punish a man who has found guilty. You have done that with guilt. Okay. Th 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 thank you so much, uh, Yiko Domaki. Let me just, yeah. uh, since I promised uh, Mr. Tito Atikashi, maybe in 45 seconds, if you can quickly respond to an issue that he has just raised. 
Why don't well, you uh, go to court before you start freezing account? Have they been have they been charged? Have they been confirmed guilty before you start freezing their account? Yeah, Mr. Otito Aktikashi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, quickly respond to that. Some of the issues he has yes, raised in yes. 45 seconds. You, you, you see, you see, my major concern here mm. is the integrity of my leader, Governor Olaro Tumiake, the Lord now your SCN. The governor I know is a man of justice. The governor I know is somebody that doesn't speak with both sides of his mouth. He will say it the way it is, not minding who is also judge. Okay. And it does not appeal to uh, public sentiment, either, to public, either it's acceptable to the public or not. He will face the reality, and that is the reality okay. he has faced. Thank all you so over much. the world, all over the world, government will take a decision, and the decision will not go well, will not go down well with the people. And what the people will do is to challenge. Division of government. Okay, thank you so that's much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Otito Atikashi. I'm so sorry. I will have to actually end it there. Thank you for your time, Mr. Yinka Odumaki, spokesperson of Afeni Ferry. Thank you for your yeah. time, too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, an APC chieftain refers to the freezing of account belonging to individuals suspected to have funded the NSAS protest as faulty. We'll be right back. Please don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Plus Politics. In response to the freezing of the account belonging to individuals suspected to have funded the NSAS protest, a former national legal advisor of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Mr. Muhiz Banire, SAN, says the court order on the freezing of hashtag answers protesters' accounts is flawed. He stated that it is a case of putting the cart before the horse. He asked that President Muhammadu Buhari's administration meet the demands of the Nigerian youth. Joining us to throw more light on his position and other national issues is Dr. Muiz Banire himself, who joins us from Abuja. Good evening, Mr. Banire. Good evening. Yeah, good to have you. Let me quickly start with uh, the statement that you made yesterday on another national TV that is trending. Uh, what exactly do you mean that uh, that court order was flawed? Can you throw more light on that? Well, uh there are so many issues surrounding the court order. In the first instance, uh, you will discover that uh, the account of these uh, people were frozen much earlier than in the first instance uh, before they approached the court, before the CBN approached the court. That's number one. Secondly, when the, the CBN approached the court, the order given by the court itself, uh, clearly, if you have seen it, before, uh, if you have seen it, says that CBA, the order is given in order to enable the CBN to make further to make inquiry and investigation to the various accounts. That in itself is wrong because the CBN relied on section 68B of the uh, Bovia, the bank, bank and other financial institution act to seek that expert order. And therein, if you look at that provision, the contemplation in the provision is that immediately upon grant of the order, is for the security agency, the police, EFCC, the DSS, to take over the investigation from that moment. But what you find in the order is that it's enabling the CBN to do what it ought to have done. If at all it had the competence, which I disagree, I do not concede, that CBN is even in that position to look into such security issues. It's a decimation of even the security agencies themselves. We have the, the Department of State Security, we have the Nigerian police, we have the EFC and all these other agencies that can deal with it, that squarely deals with issues of security. Their, man, their core mandate is security. CBN has not even discharged its full responsibility to the economy. 
before veering to other issues. You recall the last time that I made the same observation during the COVID period when it abandoned and neglected its responsibility, jumping all over the old place in respect of COVID. Same thing now, what has the previous God to do? Let's even assume without considering that there is a possible ter act of terrorism in this instance. Even under the terrorist act, uh, terror, uh, terrorism act, CBN is not completed, contemplated, it's not one of the agencies that is supposed to investigate terrorism. So how come CBN is the one saying we suspect this there is a deposit or operation on the account that tends to relate to issue of terrorism? So as far as I'm concerned, the order itself, both the as granted, is defective. And secondly, even the locus of the CBN in doing so is equally challenged. Okay. So Beyond this one is the issue of the constitutionality and the human rights of these people. These people have a right to privacy. They have families. They have, why should you store somebody's means of livelihood, his account for six months or seven months, when you have not even granted him the opportunity of defending himself for six months? That, I believe, in itself is unconstitutional because we have the right of fear in it. If, for example, you suspect that I'm a terrorist, the normal thing to do under any rule of law anywhere in the world is first and foremost to invite me to interrogate, to investigate the circumstances of where and when you find me carrying out any act of terrorism. And not to start by first and foremost okay. going after my asset. Dr. Banure. So on all this course, I believe that the order certainly is flawed. Okay, Dr. Banure, we just want to take a short break. We need to establish... Uh more clarity on your face because we want to quickly do a bit of adjustment. We'll be back after the short break. Welcome back. We still have Dr. Moise Banure, former national legal advisor of APC. I was just corrected uh, um, during the break that is no longer a member of APC, but it's on record. I was the former legal advisor of the APC. Okay, back to what you were saying. You, you, you cited several issues to fault the, the move by the CBN and the court order. But let's look at what led to that. And part of the things you were credited to have said is that the government is losing the, the, the trust of the people. The people are also losing trust in the government. So can we look at uh, the lucky shooting, the idea that the five demands were responded to, SARS was disbanded, government seems to be doing something that we are not used to, responding according to our own standard, quite faster than what we used to know. So do you really think that the end SARS was heading nowhere at the time? No, it wasn't. In fact, in one of my write up I did commend the government for it, for the maturity demonstrated throughout the period of the protest. But unfortunately, the gain of that period is being withered off now by those who I consider to be overzealous. Certainly, what the government did during that period, you will discover that even the president himself in his field did remark that, look, I recognize the right of every Nigerian to engage, I mean, to, 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 to protest. And in addition to that, like rightly or that, immediately the demands were made. Less than 24 hours, the government accepted all the five demands. But now, is the occurrences now that are now threatening that mileage that the government gained during that period? Okay. So, are you still there or we've lost the network again? I'm I'm here. And with you. Okay, so w w when we look at um, the protests, basically, we are looking at what lessons we need to learn because it appears the government and the governed, by extension, the protesters, are back on the war path. What is probably lacking now is that people are not on the street. But we've seen this protest, you know, gravitating towards the discourse. Several seminars are being done online. What lessons do government need to pick now going forward? Thank you very much. The first one is government must learn how to build confidence in the people. People need to be able to trust the government. For a long time now, 
I must confess to you, Nigeria generally do not have trust in their government. And government over time too has not really shown any reason why Nigeria should trust its leaders. I've seen several instances where policy decisions or policy statements were made. And at the end of the day, is the converse that you found happening. But so this is an opportunity for the government to say, we mean what we say. Haven't, you, you see, people seem not to even appreciate the role that the concerned professional played in the dialogue. For almost a week, a members of the group were actively engaged in trying to bridge the gap between the government and the protesters. And at the end of the day, thank God, the result was achieved. And our expectation is that government will be able to continue the engagement. But unfortunately, the event of the last one week is somehow uh, depressing because what we expected is that government will set up all of so many other structures towards engaging the youth all over the federation. Again, we need to continuously draw the line between the hoodlums and the genuine protesters. We they themselves have remarkably been talking about. So there is no basis for now harassing, threatening, intimidating these genuine protesters. Most of these people that we have seen that are being described by the CBN or the suggestion is being made that maybe the more the, the fund in their various accounts are being used for terrorism certainly cannot be. I think they to give us some measure of intelligence. It's an insult to our intelligence. <laughs> and at times, I do not know whether people don't even think that this kind of thing will happen. We all know the actors, we all know what has happened, okay. and suddenly they become terrorists. I've not seen how many people that DPN has been able to freeze their account since the beginning of Boko Haram to date. Okay. Mr. Why is it the one of their side? This youth that we must encourage. Okay. Those, do we want those are youths? Have you forgotten that these are the people that will take over from us? I do not know how all these people are taking. They have children. Some of these leaders have children like them. Let's even assume the worst scenario, like I said yesterday, that let's even say these youth are even wrong. Is it not our duty to correct them? Is it by the harassment that we correct them? Is okay. it by the threat Dr. that we Banner, correct? What are we teaching them? Dr. Banner, what lesson I, I think are we you, passing on to them? You have so much to this say. You have so much. That eventually will lead to what is not anticipated. Okay. It's like those who make peaceful engagement impossible certainly are by making violence inevitable. Hmm. That That's is the, very, uh, the, the position globally. As, as much as it's a popular code, it's also a very dangerous one. Let me quickly get this one or two bonus. But reality. Let, it, let, it's let the me reality. Get this, let me get We've this. We've seen it. Let me, get this, let me get these two bonuses from you. Number one, yes, it's on record that you're no longer a member of APC. And uh, just to quickly bring your memory back, um, one of the things you said, which I remember very well, you were seriously against the national chairman of APC then, whom you worked with, that's Adam Sushomole. How, how do you feel looking at what happened? Is it a case of, I said it, in a dual state uh, governorship election? Well, I never worked with Joshua Muller deliberately. I worked with Chief uh, Oyegun. Oh, sorry. And Chief immediately, Joshua uh, Muller was coming in. I knew what would be the end. And I predicted it. Not only did I say it out loudly, I rewrote it then that this would be the end. And that everything played out to the script. So I wasn't shocked at all where the party ended okay. ultimately. I left immediately because I knew that's what happened, and I did not want to be part of that process. Okay. And the final one is, uh, there is another one that is in the news, which has one or two um, direct link to you, too. The move by the current governor of Lagos State to stop the pension of former governors. Uh, what do you think, what do you have to say to that? Well, from inception, I've always been against it. I've always been against it because... The reality is that governors, by extension, the deputy governors, when, ele when the, ele the election time is around, you find them all over the old place, practically prostrating to everybody to say, we want to come and serve you. Have you served us, presumably? Why would you want to impose yourself as a burden on us again? If I might fear in Lagos, State, if it had not been abolished, that by that we have the next 10 administration, more than half of the resources of Lagos will go to the funding of their pension. 
So it is an unquestionable transaction. I've always been against it. I do not support it. And I believe that in other states where it exists, it must, as a matter of urgency, the legal framework, the laws must be repealed so as to stop it. In fact, I venture to say that even if possible, the public should even record, they should return all that they are taking, if possible. <laughs> and one must give kudos to uh, Fatula. Fatula, from the day he was descending, he made it clear and clear, and announced it to everybody clearly that, for me, I'm morally conflicted. I'm not going to take the cover, and he never took. And that's how it must be. OK. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Muiz Banref, former National Legal Advisor of APC and no longer a member of APC. Thank you for your time and your intervention. My pleasure. Yeah, we'll take a short breather. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take on this issue. Please and please don't go anywhere. Here is my take. One of the major reasons many protesters refused to leave the streets, even when federal government swiftly disbanded SARS and even promised to meet the five demands, was the issue of trust. In what looks like their reservation has been confirmed, government agencies like CBN did not just seek for accounts of the protest leaders to be frozen, it was even granted by two different courts. As if that was not all, a so-called Abuja-based activist also went to court to sue the alleged promoters for damages. Sadly, it has been the report of trumped-up charges here and there against pockets of protesters. All these are symptoms of no intention of dialogue as mounted by government in the height of the protests. Let me say this for record. Trust, as often said, is not demanded. It is earned. It is earned on the ground of consistent integrity. What is integrity? It is saying and doing. In case the government has not learned any lessons from the protests which resulted into uprising, may I remind them that there is an army of disenchanted, disoriented youths who are on a standby to demand for their rights illegitimately. The people in power should be wary of the rage of the poor. There is a chance to right the wrong, and the best way to do this is come open and clean, come open and clean to the negotiation table. And that's my take for today. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. I remain your host, Coyote Ladendi, saying bye for now. Mm -hmm.